Question number three from M1 January 2020, International A-Level. Um, a particle P is projected vertically upward with a speed U from a fixed point O. At the instant when P reaches its greatest height, H above O, a second particle Q is projected with a speed of half U vertically upwards from O. Find H in terms of U and G. Okay, so the particle P is projected upwards from O. Okay, so let's say this is a level of O. Okay, so it reaches a height H. It reaches a height H. Okay, so let, let's say that's as far as it reaches, and then um, that's its greatest height that it reaches, then it goes down again, basically. So that's its greatest height that it reaches. It goes up to there. Okay, and then it comes down, most probably, whatever. So this is a H. This distance is H. That's how high, high it goes. It's, it's projected with the speed U. Okay, so upwards. Okay, and gravity is acting downwards. All right. And then at the same, no, um, at the instant reaches its greatest height, then Q is also projected with a speed of half U vertically. So this is P. And then Q is also projected, but with a speed of half U. And that's at the time when this has reached H. Okay, I don't think we need that for part A. Part A says find H in terms of U and G. Okay, let's consider P then. Consider P. And let's see what we have. We have constant acceleration, so we can use the Suvat equations. So S is equal to H. U is equal to U. V is equal to zero, because it's reached the top of its flight, so it's instantaneously at rest at the point where it reaches H. A is equal to, now I'm going to take up as positive, seeing that it's been, it's been projected upwards, and the gravity always acts down, so that will be negative G. And T, I don't think we need T. So we got V, U, A, and S. So we can say V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So if we use the formula V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, we should get what we need. So we got 0 is equal to U squared, which is U squared, um, plus 2 times minus G. We have to keep it in terms of G. So don't use 9.8 here, just use in terms of G. Let me make that a bit neater. Okay, minus G, and S is V squared plus 2AS, and S is our H, which we have to find. So we have to make H the subject of this formula. So we're going to end up here with um, 2GH equals U squared. So H is equal to U squared over 2G. So there's the answer to part A. Okay. And it says part B, find in terms of U and G the time between the instant when Q is projected and the instant when the two particles collide. Okay. So basically what's happened is P is projected. When P reaches this height H, that's when Q is projected at that time. Okay. So it seems like we can either answer this question in terms of the displacement of the two particles being the same, because they'll collide when the displacement from O is the same. So we could take the displacement from O and make the displacement equal to each other's displacement. Uh, then you'll be able to find, you know, the the time, the the time at which they collide. Okay, we could do it that way. Another way we could do it is by the fact that they've been, once P has reached the top of its flight, from that time onwards, okay, they will both have traveled the same time, T, when they collide. Because once it's reached the top of its flight, okay, once P has reached the top of its flight, that's when U, Q is, is projected. Okay, so we can do it in two ways. I'm going to show you both ways. I personally think that second way might be shorter. But let's do it by the way we normally you would deal with it by using um, displacement. So let's say the displacement from O is X. Okay. So let's say that we, we, we consider them to have the same displacement. So if we consider P. Okay. So it's starting from O. It's going up and coming down. 
All right, so it's displacement from O is X. Okay, its initial speed is U. Okay, and so let's, let's put everything we know. S is equal to X, and U is equal to U, and V is equal to, we don't know at that point where it collides, question mark, and A is equal to minus G, it's being projected upwards, so I'll take it up as positive, and T is equal to, okay, so now, it's been flying, okay, um, for the time it takes to reach there, plus the additional time, when Q was released. Okay, so we've got to think about the time it took to get to the top of its flight. Okay, because I can link those times together. This is going to be have this is going to be in the air longer than Q. See Q is going to be projected from O. Okay, and with a speed of a half U, A is going to be down, so it's going to be minus it's going to be the acceleration is going to be down, okay, G, okay, and this is going to be in the air for T seconds. That's what we have to find, the time uh, between the instant when P is projected and the instant when the two particles collide. So this is going to be in the air for T seconds plus the time it took to, to reach the top of its flight. So we need to find the time it took to reach the top of its flight. Okay, so let's go back here and find the time it took to reach the top of its flight which is going to be given by this information here. And we can see we've got V equals U plus AT. So V equals U plus AT. And V is zero. So zero equals U minus GT. So you've got GT equals U. So T equals U over G. So that's the time that this particle took to reach the top of its flight. Okay, U over G. Okay, that's the time it took for it to reach the top of its flight. Okay, so now, um, we've got enough information here for P. Now for Q, we have S equals the same displacement, U equals a half U, initial speed, V we don't know, A is minus G, Okay, so the t time for this is the time it took to reach the top of its flight plus additional time t, which is the time that we have to find. That's what we actually actually have to find here. So here the time is just t, you see, because um, this has been in the air for the time it took to get to the top of its flight plus the additional time um, t, and once p reached the top of its flight, that's when q was projected. So q has been in the air for just t seconds. So we got these two equations which involve S, U, A and T, so I think it's going to be S equals U, T, U, T plus a half A, T squared. Yeah, so we can use that for both of them. So we got X equals, the X is the same in both cases, and um, we got U, T, so U times T which is U over G plus t, um, plus a half times minus g, times minus g, times t squared, which is u over g, u over g plus t squared, and that's, for, for q, this is for p, for q, you got x, S equals U T, so U is a half U, so you have a half U times T plus a half uh, times A, which is minus G times T squared. Okay, it looks less complicated. But these two are equal to each other because they have the same displacement. Okay, they have the same displacement at the time T that we're looking for. We're looking for the time at which they are the same distance because uh, the same displacement from O because that's when they collide. And that's what we're looking for, where they collide. We're looking for the time it took them to collide from when Q was projected. Okay, so now, these two must be equal to each other, these two X's. So let's just try to simplify. This is U squared over G. You've got to be careful with these algebraic things. Plus UT. Then you're gonna have minus a half G 
times, let me expand this bracket first, that's u squared divided by g squared plus 2 ut over g plus t squared and that's equal to a half ut minus a half g t squared. So now let's expand this. It looks really complicated right now. But hopefully it will simplify out plus ut. Then you're going to have minus a half times g g g u squared over g squared. So the g's will cancel out and you're left with minus, you'll get u squared over 2g. Okay, and then you're going to have a minus a half g times 2ut over g. Okay, so the g's will cancel out, the 2's will cancel out, you'll have a minus and you'll have ut. 2 and yeah, minus ut. Okay, which will actually cancel with this ut here. And then you're going to have minus again, you're going to have a half g t squared equals a half u t minus a half g t squared. So we can see some sort of light here because these will cancel because if you try and bring them together one is positive one is negative so that will cancel out. You've got u t minus u t which is also going to cancel out give you zero. You've got u squared over g minus u squared over g uh, u squared over 2g is like 1 minus a half which is a half so it leaves you with a half u squared over g let me just call it u squared over 2g that's u squared over 2g looks like things are cancelling out nicely here u squared over 2g is equal to and you've got on this side a half ut left a half ut and remember we have to find what t is. So t is going to equal, the 2's will cancel, one of the u's will cancel, so you're left with u over g, which looks familiar. u over g seconds. Okay, so that's the time at which they um, collide. Okay, so that's the time at which they collide, which looks familiar for some reason why u over g. Okay, that's the time it took to reach the top of its flight. So the time it took to reach... So they must collide... at O. They must collide at O. Okay. Anyway. So find where the two particles collide. Well, I just mentioned they must collide at O. Let's just prove it by some calculations. Okay. So to prove this, that they collide at O, we have to use the fact that we know the time. So let's use it, we can find um, using the easier one of the two equations, which is this one here. Ut plus a half minus Gt squared. Okay. Or can we use something else? We know T is U over 2. Let's see what we know. We know S we want to find S. That's what we're trying to find. U is, let's consider the second particle, a half U. A is minus G. V we don't know. And T is U over G seconds. So we want to find S. So I guess we have to use the same formula. S equals U T plus a half A T squared. Uh, my, my guess is it's going to be zero. It's going to be at the origin from the fact that this is u, u over g seconds, the same time it took that to reach the top, it's the same time it come to the bottom. Anyway, let's see what happens. We're going to have s equals ut, so s equals ut, plus a half at squared. So s is x, which we have to find, u is a half u, T is U over G plus a half times minus G times U over G squared. 
So u there. Okay. So let's see what it gives us. It's a half u squared. So it's going to be basically u squared over 2g. u squared over 2g minus you're going to have you're going to have a half times g times u squared over g squared. So that will cancel with that. So you'll get u squared over 2g minus, you can have u squared over 2g, which is 0. Okay, so therefore they collide at O. They collide at O. Okay, so what you could say is basically when this is at the top of its flight that's projected upwards and then as this is falling this goes to its top of the flight as this is coming down then they both fall down together and they collide this, this falls fast and that one they collide at up. so one's going up and then as it reaches the top this one's projected upwards, it goes up and starts coming down. This one's coming down faster, and they'll collide at the same level as O. That's basically what we can understand from that. Okay, so there's the answer to that question. Okay, um, now, I mentioned that there's an alternative way, most probably, of finding out this uh, time at which they collide. And, see, what we did here is we said, okay, let's consider the displacement from O being the same, and use that. Okay, an alternative way would have been to consider um, P from the time it reached the top of its flight and consider the time after that. Because the time after that to, um, to the time which they collide will be the same time that Q has been in the air. Okay, so we could consider it with the times being the same. Okay, so that's another way of doing it, which I'm going to show you. Okay, so um, P and Q. So we're considering now from when P has reached the top of its flight. Okay, so it's reached the top of its flight and it's gonna go down. Okay, so this is O, this is H, and we're considering it from this time. This is the point we're considering it from. So that's when time is zero, and for Q, it's starting from O, it's going upwards. So this is starting going downwards now, this is going upwards. Okay, and it's, um, here its initial speed is zero because it's reached the top of its flight and it's instantaneous instantaneous speed is zero. Here its initial speed is a half u. Okay, so you got gravity acting downwards. All right, for, so for P, what I'll do is I'll consider for P, um, I'll say, okay, it's, it's going to have fallen, let's call this distance x. Okay, let's call it x1 and this will have risen a distance, let's call it x2. I know the total distance is the height. Okay, so we can say basically the height is made up of x1 plus x2. So we could use that as a, as a way of uh, linking them together. So basically, um, we're going to have s, u, v, a, and t. So s here is x1, u is 0, v we don't know, Acceleration, um, I'm taking down as positive here because it's, it's going down now, so I'll call this G. And T is the time that we're trying to find. And for Q, we have S is equal to X2, U is equal to a half U, V we don't know, A is, I'm going to call it G, uh, minus G this time, because it's, it's, I'm projecting upwards, being projected upwards. And t is what we have to find. So if we look at these two equations, s, u, a, and t, again, it's going to be s equals u, t plus a half a, t squared. u, t plus a half a, t squared. u, t plus a half a, t squared. So s is equal to, so you've got x1 is equal to u, which is 0, times t. So that's going to be 0 plus a half times a, which is g, times t squared. 
Okay, that looks a bit more friendly than the last one, doesn't it? And this is x2, which is equal to ut, which is a half times ut, okay, plus a half times minus g times t squared. Okay, so these two are, if you add them together, you get the, the, the height. So h is equal to the sum of these two. Okay, so h is equal to the sum of these two. So h is equal to a half gt squared plus a half ut minus a half gt squared. These two cancel out and you're left with h equals a half times ut so t is going to be 2 times h over u. Was that the same answer that we got? Okay, let's have a look. It's not the same answer. Hold on, because we want to find it in terms of u and g. Okay, so we need to have it in terms of u and g. What do we have here? We have it in terms of h and u. Okay, so we already found out what h was. So we don't need the h there. Now h we found out from part a. h is equal to u squared over 2g. Ah, sorry, we're doing part b. Part b says find in terms of where are we? Where are we? u over g. Is that what we got there, u over g? No, we didn't get in terms of u and g. We don't need the h yet. So we need, we need to find out what the h is. Um, we need to replace the h with what it is, which is u squared over 2g. Sorry about that. So h is u squared over 2g. So h is u squared over 2g, because if you want the time in terms of u and g, okay, we have to replace the h with u squared over 2g. So let's just do that for the final step. We have 2 over u times u squared over 2g. And then you'll end up with the 2's cancelling out and the u's cancelling out, and you're left with u over g, which was our answer. Okay, so this is an alternative way of answering part B. Mm, I don't know, it seems a bit, a bit less hassle. Okay, so for the second method, what we used is the fact that um, we, we tried to make it so that they, we start it from the time when H reached the top of its flight. Therefore, the T in this and the T in this will be exactly the same T. Okay, because they're both in the air for the same amount of time from that point until they collide. And also, we know that this has fallen h and this is risen h okay so the displacements will be um the sum of the displacements will be h the sum of the displacements will be equal to h okay so therefore we can use that method to find the time at which they collide so those are a couple of different methods of doing that the other method was where we basically said that the displacement is the same Okay, the displacement is the same. The displacement in terms of from from O is the same at which uh, where they collide. Okay, so we use that. We made the displacements the same, and then we considered the time of this flight was t more than the time it reached the top of its flight, which we worked out as u over g. Okay, so there we have the answer to that question.